Hi there, welcome back. In today's lesson, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. We all know that because of the corona issue, classes were done online and this beautiful lady managed to graduate in spite of all that was going on. I have a few images of her and I wanted to create a graduation card as a gift for what she's been able to accomplish. So I'm just going to show you a few images that I pulled together to come up with this simple concept, but yet still very powerful. I hope you enjoy this. Come along with me as we go through this tutorial. So what I did was I pulled one of the images from her graduation photos, which I think really stands out and really sends out the message of, hey, I'm done and I'm so excited. I'm over the moon. I'm going to drop in some other images. So I'm going to double click on this image and I'm just going to use my move tool and I'm going to drag this holding down my left mouse. I'm going to release. And then I'm going to just rescale. I'm going to bring in all the images. I'm going to go to the next one. I love this image. It's so powerful because it's so timely because of what is happening. You look at this um, graduation card years from now and it just sends out the message that this was the time in the season when we had the crisis. I just love it. I'm going to bring in sort of a background that I'm going to use as the frame around each image. So I picked up a gold-ish background, which you can get online. Um, so I'm just going to drag that in as well. I'm going to put this image beneath each of the different graduation photos. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just scale this up a little, double click to deselect. I'm going to pull this image below. So I'm going to put it here. So it's beneath all of the other images, except the background. And I'm just going to move, I'm going to zoom in and I'm just going to use my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle from one end to the other. And as you can see, now I'm just eyeballing to create the frame. So I'm going to right click with the background layer selected. Instead of cutting out, I'm going to make a copy. So we always keep the original. So I'm going to turn off the original. And as you can see, I do have a frame around this photo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this background that I created for the photo. I'm going to click on the photo itself, holding down my shift. I'm going to right click and I'm going to link both layers. Why am I doing that? It makes it easier to move both layers. So I'm going to rescale this and I'm going to rotate just like that. And I'm going to move it here. I'm going to rescale it just a little bit more. So I get it in the exact location that I want. So with this one, I don't want the full picture. I just want half of the picture. So I'm just going to crop. I'm going to right click. And then this time I'm going to cut. And I'm going to turn off the lower portion of the photo. I'm going to set it here. I'm going to turn back on my background. And I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to also create another frame around this. I'm going to right click and make a copy. I'm going to turn off the original background. And I want to move this picture here and I want to take this somewhere here. So I'm going to set this right there. I'm going to scale it down a little and set it right there. I'm going to double click to deselect. I'm going to turn on the background and I'm going to move this down here. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to position it. 
you can choose whatever frame size you want. You can make your bottom frame even bigger and the top smaller. So it's all preference. So I wanna make sure I'm on the background layer. I'm gonna right click and create a copy. Go into 10 off the background and I'm going to zoom in. So I have this new frame. I'm gonna take it all the way up to where the photo is. I'm gonna select both and I'm going to link it. I'm going to move it just a little bit. And I like the way it looks. I'm gonna zoom out. So it's coming together. I'm going to work on this one as well. And I'm gonna deselect. So we have these four images. They look great. Now I wanna add some text. We are first of all going to type in, I'm gonna make sure my foreground and background, my foreground is white. I'm gonna select my text tool and I'm going to type in lowercase g. I'm going to highlight and I'm going to change my font. I'm going to choose um, basket veil. You can choose whatever font you want. And I'm just going to scale it. I'm going to move it up. I'm going to deselect. I'm going to change the color to white. I'm going to click on my move tool, which activates my selection. Or you can press control T to activate your selection. And I'm going to set it in the right place. I'm going to double click to deselect. And I'm gonna move, I'm going to take the opacity down. You can use your text tool to type in your next text or you can make a copy. So I'm gonna make a copy of this text by selecting the text layer and then dropping it to the duplicate icon I'm going to move my duplicate. I'm going to select my text tool, and then I'm going to change this text to R, and I'm going to move it somewhere here. And I'm going to rescale just a little. So the next thing you want to do is to add, of course, we want to know the year. So I'm going to click on my move, my text tool again. And this time I'm just going to type in the year. I'm going to select and I'm going to change the font. I want the B bass and I want to make sure that the color is white. I'm going to move this right here and I'm going to scale it. I want it a little bit bigger. I'm gonna position it right there. I'm going to rescale this just a little, so it stands out a little bit more. I'm gonna double click. So now that we have our text in place, I'm going to add a gradient effect, which I have done on multiple tutorials. So to add a gradient effect, I'm going to click on my background layer and I'm going to go to my adjustments. And I'm going to choose gradient and I'm going to change the color by double clicking in this window. Another window pops up. You wanna click on the stop. The stop will pull up the color and you can change it. I want a darker color. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to also change the end color to black. And I'm going to click OK. And OK. So now what I want to do, I'm going to take down the opacity of this so it's not so strong on the face. So something like this. So you can see the difference between the before and after. So 
If you want, you can take it even down a little bit more further. I like the way it looks. And now we can begin to play with these. We can even take it down just a little bit more. So it's not so strong in the face. It shows up, but at the same time, it's not so visible. I like how this looks. I'm going to take this down just a little. So I'm going to take my eraser tool and I'm going to increase the brush head. I want to make sure that I'm on that layer and I'm just going to increase my brush head and I'm just going to dab to reveal. You can see this is the before and that is the after. So the effect of the gradient is basically on the lower level of the picture and around the two edges. I'm going to add two more texts. So I'm going to type in, of course, congratulations. It looks really nice. I love the way this looks. So I have two more tricks to show you. So the first one, we want to add a little bit of depth to our frames. So I'm going to click on this frame and I'm going to right click, go to blending options. And we want to click on emboss. When you click on emboss, it adds a little bit of a, a shadow depth effect to the frame. And I'm going to click OK. I'm not going to add too many effects. I'm going to right click on the actual image itself and we can add an inner glow. If you add an inner glow, the frame on the inside changes or you can do a bevel on the inside to create a depth on your frame. So this is all preference. Whatever you want to do is up to you, but I'm going to leave it like this. But I just wanted to show you in case you wanted to do that. Okay, so I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to go to all the different frames. I'm going to right click and just add the bevel effect to all of them. So you can see that it's a slightly different effect. Now the frames have sort of a 3D effect to it. Whereas before this effect, it looked like a flat 2D image. So these are a few techniques that you can use. I hope this helps you in your design. So the last thing that I want to do is to add some confettis. Yeah, it's a celebration. Celebration needs some confettis. So what I want to do is show you a little trick that I do. So I pulled up a confetti online and I'm going to bring this in and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to scale it like that. I'm going to double click to deselect and I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to screen. So once I change it to screen, you see that we lose the black. And the only thing you see are the confettis. So I, I like this, but it's a bit too much. So we are going to play with it a little. So I'm first of all going to make a copy of this and I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to scale this. I'm going to zoom, scale it like that. I'm going to double click. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this back. So I'm going to put it somewhere here. So it's beneath my subject, beneath the photos. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to decrease the opacity just a little. I'm going to pick up my brush tool and with my layer selected, I'm going to decrease my brush head and I'm going to just take the confettis off my, 
my subject in most areas. So I'm just going to leave just a little um, confetti on the subject, but most of it I'm going to take off. Or if you want to leave it on, make it more dramatic, you can do that. But I just want to create a less of a dramatic effect with the confettis. And I'm going to dab to get rid of some on the text, show it, but not so much. Something like that. So it's still showing up, but it's not over empowering. What you can also do is that you can go to image adjustment and then with the hue saturation, we can actually change the color of the confettis. So as you can see, um, this is the effect, but you can still play around with it till you get the desired effect that you want. I'm going to click on my background image. I'm going to go to image adjustment, brightness and contrast. And I'm just going to brighten up my background image. And as you can see, there's a dramatic difference between the before and after. I'm going to do the same thing for this picture. I'm going to go to image adjustment, contrast and brightness. And I'm going to increase the contrast a little and I'm going to press OK. I'm going to do the same thing for this image. There you have it, folks. It's all done. I'm so happy with this. I know that Chelsea is going to love this graduation card. And I also want to give a big shout out to her sister, who is Brittany, who took these amazing photos. Congratulations to both of you. If you are new to this channel, I would like you to take a minute, like, subscribe. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell for all future uploads. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.